Hello and welcome to TA Made Simple, a short podcast, a short vlog, if you like, um, with psychotherapist Bob Cook, who takes uh, elements of transactional analysis and makes them simple for you. And we're going to be talking about strokes and different types of strokes. So my first question, Bob, is what is a stroke? It's a unit of social recognition. So when I say, hello, Rory, and you say back to me, hello, Bob, you have a stimulus and you have a response. So it's a unit of social recognition. Now there's different types of strokes, positive strokes. So I've, I said to you, oh, it's really nice to see you, Rory. That would be a very positive stroke. I could say, of course, I really like your shirt, which is a positive conditional stroke, which means for you for that you might always feel you've got to wear this shirt for me to like you. So yeah. it's conditional on the shirt. <laughs> yeah. So. So if you say to someone, oh, I like, I like you, your shirt or your dress or something like yeah. that, the message may be, I like you dressed like that or I like you like that. Right. Yeah. Right. So it's into social recognition. And then you've got, you've got negative strokes, uh, which uh, would be, you know, uh, more like on the sense of I don't like you, or I don't like the shirt. Uh, but then, of course, you have uh, verbal and nonverbal strokes. So oh, verbal right. I've just given you. And non-verbal, and I can't reach into the screen and do this, but would be to give you a hug, a non-verbal positive stroke. Yes. And then you've got that on the negative side, of course. So you've got social, it's a unit of social recognition. It's in a TA lexicon of language. It's a nice colloquial um, word, I think. And just quickly find that, Claude Steiner was a prodigal son of Eric Byrne. Yes. Uh, he wrote a lovely little book all of our strokes, and I can't quite remember, it was such a long time ago, but I love the nicknames. So positive strokes are warm fuzzies. Yes. So that people feel really warm when they get them. And negative strokes are cold pricklies, and they feel quite cold when they get those strokes. Yes. <laughs> and did you tell a story that the world ran out of, of warm fuzzies? Yeah, that's right. Because yeah. That. And he wrote this whole book about it. Uh, and, of course, it's really important. And as a therapist, a transactional analyst will think of strokes a lot because when people come in with low self-esteem they usually are have a diet of negative or uh, negative conditional strokes and they they haven't got a uh, full dinner if you like of positive strokes um, and strokes of course represent you know our childhood in a way you know what diet of strokes we had in our family of origin will represent how we are today yes now you, t you talk yes and that's an interesting one isn't it a, a lot of our self-worth and, and we've covered this on many a conversation bob usually starts in childhood and the yeah. interactions we have with our with primary caregivers or people mm -hmm. who people interact with like teachers and they can have a huge impact um you know and if those strokes aren't in place people can take the, that lack of self-worth through the arc of the life oh absolutely and I'd like to talk about different types of strokes, which is very important to think about clinically, but I just also in terms of the theory. Um, so we talk about positive or negative in general strokes. Now, specific strokes, let's, I want to give you three. One which is called a bullseye stroke. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that goes to all three ego states at once. In other words, it goes to the adult, parent, and child. So you aim it for the adult, but always remembering that the parent is listening on and the child is always there. Yes. So the stroke needs to satisfy the parent and also be one that the child feels as well. So it's a really bullseye stroke that um, satisfies the three ego states. Right. So if, if, you, if someone was at graduation, you, you'd say, oh, you've done really well with your study and you must be so proud of yourself. Yeah, so, that's so that, that talks to the child, it talks to the parents, and it talks to the adult. Yeah, yeah, and it's called a bullseye stroke. And one thing about a bullseye stroke is that many people deflect bullseye strokes, and they have what's called a stroke umbrella, or in some books, it's called a stroke filter, where they allow in some strokes, but of course, filter out others. And bullseye strokes are often ones. 
uh, which they may filter out, but a good, a real, a transaction analyst that knows their clients will time the bullseye stroke at the right time in the clinical process. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so it's, a, it's an interesting one to think about. Uh, mm -hmm. Go on. Well, I was, I was just thinking, Bob, I suppose if you're working with someone who had an attachment difficulty. Oh, yes. yes. Then, then you wouldn't, you know, if someone would say had an ambivalent attachment, a bullseye stroke may not be very useful early on because, because you know, people with an ambivalent attachment are push, you know, tend to be push pull and, uh, and it might be overwhelming for them. That's right. So they filter it out, they redefine, deflect, and in fact can be counterproductive. Mm. They might think, wow, what's this person trying to do? Are they tricking me? Yes. So they may then go underground from the therapist. You don't hear again from the real self for two or three weeks. And I think that's a really big takeaway, Bob, because that transposes not only into the world of TA, but into any therapy. You have to be very mindful when you work with a client, you have to meet them where they are. I've always said yeah. that. Meet them where they are. And, and, and you've got to be very, very careful, yeah. Yeah, so a TA therapist, well, one of the duties of a TA therapist is to help the person change their diet from these negative self-image, usually strokes, if you like, to more positive self-image through positive strokes. So you're absolutely correct. They need to think about how they time these strokes. Mm. Another stroke which is the antithesis of bullseye strokes, is what we call in transactional analysis language from Byrne, marshmallow strokes. <laughs> <laughs> so those are the strokes which are very sticky and very sort of superficial. And they, if you ever had a marshmallow, they could really just, you know, you know they're all, oh, where is it quite? They're not, they haven't got much substance to it. Uh, so marshmallow strokes are often given out uh, Woolly ninny, but they don't actually mean much. They're quite superficial, and you you, know, you can see them coming a mile, really. Yeah, so I was in the social situation uh, about last year, and I think I might have got a, a bit of a marshmallow stroke. <laughs> I met somebody who was it, it was it was it was it was uh, it was a woman, and she she said she kind of looked me up and down a bit, and she said, "Well, love your beard." And oh, I, thought, there we are. I thought, "Oh, that's well, thank you." I just said, "Well, thank you very much." Yeah. Um, well, that's a perfect example. She she obviously couldn't find anything else worthy of um, <laughs> worthy of comment, but yeah, my so beard my beard was something that was acceptable. And it leaves you a bit squirmy. Yeah, it's, it's almost like someone's trying too hard. Yes, yeah, that, that's why we've got the word. And the third one, which I like, is carob strokes. C A R O B, carob. Okay. And it means third party strokes. So uh, here's an example, a clinical example from a long time ago. Uh, uh, this client said, uh, I don't know how many sessions we've always said, do you know, I've never had a direct stroke at all. I always hear the strokes third hand. So I hear it from the ne next door neighbor who says, do you know, John, uh, your mother was saying such wonderful things about you, so, um, but never got direct strokes from the person the people that mattered so it's third party strokes a carob stroke, carob stroke. you see it a lot in groups if you're in therapy groups I'm yes them you have then what happens is the person may turn to the person in the group and say you know oh john was saying something really nice about you today he said x yeah but they don't actually say it directly to where they should be saying it. it's called a carob stroke how oh, interesting but, and quite often in the rear, you know, you often, I don't know how many times I've come across this in terms of uh, a person's background, but where clients will say, well, I never got any direct strokes from my mum and dad. I always had to get them from somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. So the, the, the parents didn't positive stroke the child, but they went to, say, their knitting class and say, do you know, Johnny's done really well in his exams. I'm so proud of them. But they never say it to where others should say it. Yeah, it's interesting. How often do we come across clients who have carob strokes where, where they may lament the fact that other people have had, had to share um, positive, positive strokes or even loving affirmations from their parents who never heard them directly? 
That's right. And there's a great sadness in that. And I remember that work very well and spent a long time uh, with the person lossing. Uh, you're really sort of going through the loss of never getting uh, a direct, intense stroke from the people they desire the strokes from. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a fascinating idea of social recognition mm -hmm. and, um, and very, very useful. And, and I think, you know, if there's a takeaway for me, I just remember, you know, where you are in the therapeutic relationship with the client, when you mm -hmm. come to use strokes, too much, too soon can be counterproductive. Well, it often is because the person goes underground. Yeah. And they don't believe you. Yeah. And they start not trusting you. Yeah, yeah. And then, then you don't see them for many times. They either don't turn up or if they're in a group, they go underground. You say, oh, I've not heard Johnny speak. Oh, well, you know, internally the client is saying, oh, well, you know, he just says things for the sake of saying it or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you can usually detect that because if that happens, someone says, well, you will say that because you're a therapist and therapists are nice yeah, people. Yeah, that's right. Such yeah. Such a deflection. Such a deflection yeah. in terms of their stroke filtering. Yeah, yeah. And and so that doesn't know this theory actually may think may think they are being clinically astute giving them positive strokes with but they don't think about how overwhelming that might be for the actual client so when they suddenly think oh god i've been stroking this person i've been modeling strokes here but this person isn't flourishing why and then they go to the supervisor and hopefully the supervisor knows this theory We'll talk about what you've just said. Yeah. Comes up in my supervision practice a lot, speaking with supervisees, and sometimes I'll say, just just go easy on the praise, which sounds very harsh, no. but actually you've got to be, it's very nuanced where, where clients come from. Definitely. Yeah, they often feel, they come from a, often a hard history, so they're not used to those type of strokes. They have been bred on negative or negative conditional strokes, so it's like going to a different world. And to suddenly be able to get this intense stroke is too much often. Yeah, it can be very unsettling because oh. it can be it literally, I've seen it in my own practice, it can be overwhelming. Oh. Um, you know, and, um, you know, there are times when I've worked with clients and um, I've given them a, a, a kind of, a, you know, long term work and I've given them a positive stroke and they've looked at me blankly and I go, ping! That bounced off, didn't it? <laughs> right. Completely right, because they just weren't ready for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and 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 I, I think it's a the very. I think strokes or, or social recognition in the therapy room is 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 a is a is a super advanced counselling skill. And here's the thing, Bob: it's not usually taught as such. Oh, no. It's not, in my experience. I think TA is 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 unique, but I think in the, in the counselling training world. I was forever when I taught. Was forever saying, "Just be thoughtful." You yes. can you can drown people in in humanistic love, literally drown them. You are absolutely correct, and they don't have anything to hang on to to drag themselves up. Yeah, That's yeah. absolutely right. That's absolutely absolutely right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's the top takeaway. So as always, Bob Cook, thank you very much. I'm going to give you a. Uh, I go this way. I'm going to give you a big existential <laughs> hug. Okay, I've got one back again. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and as always, if you're watching this, um, if you go to the if you go to, if you go upstairs, there's a playlist that you'll find all the other um, TA made simple. You could literally teach yourself transactional analysis just from mine and Bob's uh, chats. So yeah. as always, Bob Cook, thank you very much. Thank you.